now that the anime is over, it is time to rank every single season of Beyblade Burst from Beyblade Burst all the way to Dynamite Battle based on whatever I think is best. So if your favorite season gets placed at the bottom of the list, it's not because it's bad, it's just because I didn't like it as much as the other one. So let's get started. Starting off with the OG Beyblade Burst. This released originally in 2016. It's been a long, long time and it's crazy to see where we came from. This was our first introduction to Vault Aoi, Shu, Spriggan, Valkyrie, the whole main set of characters. Well, main until they weren't really main anymore, but we'll talk about that later. While the season is very simple, it's still one of my absolute favorites. Seeing where Vault Aoi started, seeing Shu kind of go down this spiral, which leads him into his major arc in season two, seeing Louis be the bad guy, like, I miss that. And I'm also really nostalgic for a lot of the Beyblades that we got during the season as well, because we got so many of them. And while there were a lot of throwaway characters and kind of throwaway Beyblades, everything just felt really fresh and very unique. So I'm gonna put this season at A tier. Next up, we have Beyblade Burst God, otherwise known as Beyblade Burst Evolution. And this second season improved on the first in pretty much every single way possible. In my opinion, Beyblade Burst God was the peak of the Burst anime in general. You had a lot of really cool characters, a lot of really cool Beyblades. For the villain, Louis is still kind of like an early season bad guy, although it turns into being Shu later on once he goes through the Requiem project and Spriggan Requiem that was a part of Beyblade Burst God and that was an insane release and speaking of characters you had a fan favorite being introduced in this season with Free De La Hoya and his bae Drain Fafnir. I really loved this season and I know you guys really liked it as well. I did a community tab poll and I put the first three seasons up against each other and asked you which one was your favorite and Beyblade Burst God won 73% of the vote. I really wanna talk about it more, maybe in a different video and I'll go more into the plot and into what happens and in the bays that released. But for now, we're gonna put this at S tier. Moving on, we have Beyblade Burst Cho Z or Chozetsu. This one was definitely really divisive and really controversial whenever it came out because we saw the main character who used to be Vault replaced by Aiga who had a lot of issues at the beginning. Aiga's character was definitely a bit of a Mary Sue in that he was really good and really powerful from the start. He could stand up to Vault like no problem even though he had never bladed before? Bladed? Beybladed before? Whichever one. This season pretty much got rid of a lot of the characters that we loved and replaced them with versions that we weren't used to and that really weren't written as well. We did have some really cool Beyblades though. The whole Chozy system was pretty decent from the start. It added metal to the layers in a pretty major way. Um, and then the later season Chozy Bays are some of my favorites in terms of their design. They just looked really, really cool. You also had who I think is probably the best villain in all of Beyblade Burst with Fi. His Beyblade had a really cool gimmick with its armor popping off. Uh, his motivations I thought were pretty cool and he was kind of the first like real villain character that wasn't just rude, that wasn't just kind of going through something. He was a full on villain who I thought was really cool. A lot of people didn't really like the series at the start but I think it got a lot better later on and I kind of look back at it in a much different way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this at B tier. Now before we move on to the next seasons of Beyblade Burst, I want to say that right now with the season 4, GT and beyond, we changed to a different format and it was definitely worse. Instead of having like 50 25 minute episodes, we went down to having 50 10 minute episodes and you can definitely feel it and the quality definitely dropped. And season 4, Beyblade Burst GT, this might get me into some hot water, is probably my least favorite season out of them all. The season had a pretty okay start with Drum and uh, his ace dragon, but all of the characters around him I thought were definitely a big step down. I can't even remember his friend's name that used Bush and Ashura, you had Loden replacing Louie and Loden was cool, but because of the new time format, we didn't get nearly enough time with him, so 
He was a worse version of Louis. We also had Fumia taking the Fafnir spot for the first time, and everybody hated this guy. Nobody liked him because Free was just so popular and he was such a good character. Meanwhile, Fumia was definitely not. This way. Listen to what your big brother tells you. The final villains were Arthur and Gwyn or Gween, and they were kind of cool. Although once again, we just didn't learn enough about them. And this is kind of a personal take, but I also was not the biggest fan of the end of season GT bays, like Master and Imperial Dragon. I just thought that they were kind of bulky. And the engine gear like drivers were just not really my favorite either because they were just really gimmicky and really bulky. So overall, I just have not really a lot of love for this series after watching it. And I'm going to have to put it all the way down at F tier. I know, I know, I know. F tier is probably insane to you guys, but I want to put all the seasons at different tiers. And this one was my least favorite, so this is where it goes. Next up, we have Beyblade Burst Sparking, and this one was definitely really interesting to me. I really like this series, and it's either kind of a you love it or you hate it. Of course, just like Chozy and GT, we have brand new MCs, but this time we have a dual protagonist with Hikaru and Hyuga. And Takara Tomi just hyped the ever-loving Hades out of this series with their Legends marketing. They kind of realized that with Chozy and GT, there was a lot of fan favorite characters that hadn't been seen in a while or just weren't given the limelight like they should have so they brought all of them back and then they just got rid of the new characters like they got fumia they hung fumia right here and just chucked them away just the villain, Lane, was also introduced really early on, so you got more time to kind of understand him and know what he's kind of dealing with. And there's just more story with him, I thought, and I liked his villain character. The biggest issue that I saw that you guys had with this series was the fact that since, you know, a lot of the characters were major legend characters, people had to lose. And so a lot of these legends definitely lost pretty easily. And I think that's just kind of due to the fact that you had 10 minutes per episode. So some battles were definitely way too fast and they didn't really put up nearly as much of a challenge as they should have. Once again, we just had a lot of Beyblade plot armor in this one. The sparking Beyblades are some of my favorite of all time, and they got really overpowered in this season as well. It's just a lot of really cool stuff releasing, and I think it was a definite huge upgrade over GT, and I like the series a lot, and I'm gonna put it at B tier. This might be kind of crazy, I know, but this is B tier. I like this a lot. And then finally, we have Beyblade Burst Dynamite Battle. And this one had really cool Beyblades, but I think the anime missed the mark a lot. The biggest issue with a lot of main characters before Dynamite Battle was that they started out too strong. And Bell is no exception. He was ridiculously strong at the beginning. Like, he was so strong that in his first ever battle with Shu, he won. It's not really a spoiler because it's not really that big of a deal, but he still won when typically he would get smacked and then win like two episodes later. Another problem with the series, in my opinion, is that instead of Bell and his connection with Belial getting stronger, he just kind of developed new parts for his bay that did all the work for him. Which, I mean, was really cool for the physical... Where's my Beyblade? Which was really cool for the physical Beyblade itself, but when you're dealing with an actual storyline, it kind of sucks that you can just put on a little armor attachment and boom, you win. It was literal plot armor. Like, actual plot armor. Rashad was kind of cool, and I liked how he used a Valkyrie before he got his own bay later on. And I do think that the final battle looked cool, although it was definitely really anticlimactic considering it was the last final battle of Beyblade Burst. I think that they definitely missed the mark with this one, and I think it was a below average Beyblade Burst series, and it could have been really good because you had a lot of opportunity there. And so I'm going to put this one at D tier. And that's going to wrap up the tier list. I mean, do you agree with me? Uh, do you believe that my rankings were fair? I know the GT and the sparking ones might be a little insane. But I would love to hear what you guys thought about my rankings and what you would rank them yourself. But if you like this video, hit that like button down below. Let's try and hit 1,000 likes. That would be amazing. Subscribe to join the Nook Nation. And I will see you in the next one. 
Have fun and bay away.